you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to get your Bibles. We're going to be on the plate this morning. I want you to turn with me. And we're going to move quickly. So, Harry, follow me. We'll see y'all get ready. In the book of Psalms, 66th chapter, and we're going to start at the 18th verse. And I want to see if you can give me Ephesians 4 and 29. And from there, go to Ephesians 4 and 23. And we're going to move quickly. Go ahead and read. Psalm 66 and 18. Read, sir. If I regard iniquity in my heart, read, sir. The Lord will not hear me. So then, when you continue to come into God's house and you hold things in your heart, how do you expect God to hear you? Some of y'all are saying that how do these people can shout and they can clap their hands and they can give God praise, but somebody in this place needs a breakthrough this morning. If I'm holding things in my heart, God ain't hearing you this morning, so then how can we expect to get something from God if we're not ready to let go to give him something? If I regard iniquity, if I'm holding things against somebody else, if I'm holding things that I can't let go, God can hear you this morning. Dr. Brenda was talking last week and she was teaching and she was saying that you have dominion. That means you have the authority and the power to call those things to be not as though they were. You got the power to put the enemy up under your feet. But how can you do these things if you're holding iniquity? That means you're holding things that you can't let go. And if you're holding stuff in your life this morning, how do you expect God to allow you to get the other side? How can you expect to walk into your promised land? How can you expect to walk into the land that's flowing with milk and honey? How can you expect to drink a break? How can you expect to receive your promise? But you're holding on to stuff this morning, and I can look around this church house and I can see so many people that were called for greatness that are still sitting back because they can't receive it because they're still holding on to some stuff this morning. You got to be ready to let it go. Every time I come into God's house, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, God, when I come into your house this morning, I'm expecting to receive something from you. I come into God's house, I don't come in here and thinking that I need something. I know God has something to give me. And if I come in here ready to receive it, I have no choice but to give it. Okay, so then when I look at getting from God, then that means I got to give him something. Okay, when we talk about everything gives, Bishop said that I was, we was out of town a few weeks ago. And I said, Bishop, I can't get away from everything gives. And he said, I know God gave you that. He said, because God told me that when we can give something to him, when we can give it, he has to give back. Luke 6 and 38, give what? And, and so give and what? So then if you want to get something from God, you got to be ready to give it. Give and it shall be given unto you. So then if I want to get something from God, I got to be ready to? Okay, if I want to get something from God, I got to be ready to? Okay, we're going to teach this morning. All right, y'all ready? Y'all ears are open. All right, oh, sir, go ahead and read for me. Ephesians 4 and 29. Read, sir. Let no corrupt communicate. Do what now? Let no corrupt Don't allow it. Read, sir. Proceed out of your mouth. So you can speak death and life in, out of your mouth this morning. You can speak what you want God to do for you. Oh, well, I come to church. I hear them talking about miracles. I hear them talking about uh, God going to lay hands on me and the blind shall see and the sick shall recover. Let, don't allow nothing negative to come out of your mouth. How do you know that this morning you won't be, this is your morning for your deliverance? How do you know that today is not your day to receive your miracle? Every day you got to open your mouth and proclaim and say, this is the day. And what? And what? So I'm happy because somebody in this place is going to receive their miracle. I'm happy today because somebody in this place is going to receive their deliverance. So then when you say let no corrupt communication, that means if I speak it, I'm allowing it to come out of me. So then if you don't speak it, it can't come out of me. You may think it like, okay, it just, I've been battling this thing for six months, but then I'm not going to speak it out of my mouth. That's why the Bible tells us in Isaiah 33 and 24, and the inhabitants shall what? So that means shall not what? Say right now. The inhabitants shall what? So then if I don't say it, then it don't come to pass. 
A word that's not spoken is a word that's not born. So then if I don't speak it, it can't come to pass. If I don't open my mouth to utter it out of my mouth, it don't come to pass. And the inhabitants shall not say it. I can't hear you. And the inhabitants shall what? Not say it. So then somebody say, don't say it. I don't care how you feel, how it looks, somebody say, don't say it. I don't care how it looks, say, don't say it. If you don't say it, it can't come to pass. If I don't say it, it won't happen. You may see a manifestation of it trying to come to pass, but I'm not going to say it. The doctor says, oh, Lord, the test came back, I'm not going to say it. Come on, the, the, the attorney said this is what's going to happen. I'm not going to say it. Because what? I'm trying to keep my mind spiritual. I'm trying to keep my mind in a place that I don't need nothing negative, so I'm not going to let no corrupt. That means you got to say something. If I don't say it, it can't come to pass. Come on, I'm trying to get somebody to get your spiritual mind working this morning. And so Richard says, I said, Bob, do you understand how powerful it is? I'm just so amazed how these words come out of your mouth, the revelation that God gives you. Yes, sir. Everything gives. Amen. So then if I'm giving myself to these problems, then that's what belongs to me. If I'm giving myself to this situation, then that's what belongs to me. I can't give myself to it. I can't let my mind go to those places because it don't belong to me. I was telling the pastor this week when we were out of town. I said, you don't understand who you are. I said, God has changed your DNA. He was telling me about how his father was uh, a pastor that didn't believe in the Holy Ghost and how he knew that God was calling him to something different. And he said that that was one of the worst times in his life because he was groomed. He grew up in church knowing that he was going to take over his father's ministry, but there was something that happened. He said God started dealing with him. He knew that there was more. He knew that God was just not the type of God that he can sit in church and all of these things taking place and people are dying and people are sick and people need God's help and that's okay. He said I needed more. And he said I went to a service one night and when I went into the service, I heard a word preached and when this word was preached, I saw God's power started moving and I saw people being slain in the spirit and I saw these people talking in this language and I'm saying what is going on? And he said, it caused me to have a desire and a hunger that I know I needed more. And he said, I had to make a decision in my life. He said, that do I continue to just stay in this place and to stay in the mindset that I am? But then he said, that I knew I wanted more. But my father didn't have it. They didn't believe in it. But he said, that when God came into my life and he changed me, I said, let me tell you what happened to you. I said, just like there was a man in the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, and he was going down the road one day, and a light shined from heaven, and then when the light shined, he fell to the ground, and he opened up his eyes, and he said, and who are you? God gave him a conversion. I said, God gave you a conversion. He changed your DNA. So then the DNA of what you used to be, God had to give you a blood transfusion and change your life. I said that God changed your life. He gave you a, open your eyes so that you can see. God didn't want you to be in that place anymore. God wanted to give you more. Amen. God wants to give you more this morning. God wants to do something in your life that's going to blow your mind. Yes. He wants to open your eyes so that you can see things that you can't see before. Yes. But if you don't ready to receive it, he can't give it to you. Why should we come into God's house every week and experience the same thing but God said that you can get more this morning? When I came into the world, I came to give you life, and I came to give you life more abundantly. I want to give you more, but the reason I can't give you more because you're not ready to receive. And that's the scary thing, that all of this time that you've been sitting in church, all of this time that you've been sitting in God's house, all of the word that God has been pouring into your life, you're still not ready to receive. So we can quote scriptures, but God said that you can quote that scripture, but I can't give you more because you're still not ready. If I gave it to you, what would you do with it? If what you've been praying for this morning, I want you to take a few minutes to think about it. What have you been praying for this morning that you need God to do for you? If God was to do that thing that you wanted him to do today, could you receive it? 
If God was to supernaturally change that situation that you've been believing for, are you able to handle it? Some of us, if we got some stuff, some of us will leave church. Some of you will get up with it and you will get, give somebody, some people your rear end a kiss. Come on, if you got some stuff this morning, I ask you again, if God was to give you that stuff, that thing, that what you've been believing for today, how would your life change? How would your life change as your relationship with him? I was telling the brothers this morning, I said that you got to have a relationship. I was explaining to them what armor bearing is all about. In the Old Testament, you'll see that when we talk about armor bearers, armor bearing was in the olden days, their job was to come after the person who they were serving would go into battle. Then their job was to come back and to slay everything that was still living. They were to carry the sword and the shield of the person who they were serving. And then when the battle was over, they would come back and make sure that there nothing else was alive. I said, but this day and time, as you're serving as the role of an armor bearer, your job is the sword is God's word. The shield is your prayer line. How can you cover the person you're serving if you don't have a relationship with God? How can you expect God to do something for you if you don't want to have a relationship with him? You got to come in here this morning. You got to say, God, I need a relationship with you. Lord, I need something more from you. I can't do this with just in the mindset that I am. I can't do it with the way that I've been thinking. I can't even do it with the way that things have been going in my life. But I need something more from you today. So when they operate, they carry the shield. And they carry the sword. So then when they went into battle, and the person who they were serving, they were getting ready to go into battle and they would give the, that leader that sword and that shield and that leader would go out into the battle to fight. And that's what our leaders do every week. They come out here and they say, we're going into a battle to fight. There's some people that, Lord, we need you to do something in their life today. But, Lord, we need you to come in there and change some situations. But I need somebody that's going to surround me, that's going to pray for me. That's going to cover me. There's too many people, everybody out here saying, I need you, Bishop. I need you more. I need you, Dr. Brenda. But then there's nobody that's really ready to cover, to shield them. How many of you sit up at night and say, Lord, bless my leaders? How many of you can pray and honestly say, Lord, will you cover my leaders today? Lord, I don't know what they're going through. Bishop said, I'm up at 3 o'clock, son. Don't worry, you can call me. I said, he said, I'm up praying. I'm praying that you can bless the people. I'm praying that you can open their eyes. I'm praying that somebody's eyes will see and they will change from their wicked ways. But I need somebody that's going to surround me, that's going to cover me. I need somebody that's going to hold a sword, that's going to go to the heavens in my bar and say, Lord, bless this place. Lord, bless the people that walk through these doors. I need somebody that's going to pray for me. Oh, 
week long, we're going through our own message. And we're saying, oh, Lord, I need you to do this for me. You're still praying about, Lord, pay my life bill. Wait a minute, God done elevated from that. You just said receive the game. you still saying, Lord, I need you to cook. I need some food on my table. Wait a minute, you know, Mr. God done already done that. You still in baby stadium, but God said, I need to give somebody that I can bless to have a million dollars in this place. I need to bless somebody that's going to lay hands on the sick and they share a cover. Y'all still worried about a light bill and a car payment. We need some real leaders to stand up in this place. I need to give somebody something in this place. This is God talking to you. I need to give somebody something in this place that's going to make a change. All of this what God has given us. All of this that God has given us if you still worry about mediocre stuff. This church should be filled, full, full of people that can call those things to be not as though they were. This church should be filled that when we speak it, it shall come to pass. But we still are operating as a baby, we still say, oh Lord, I need you to do this. Oh Lord, when you will get it done. Oh Lord, when it's going to come to pass. Oh Lord, but God said, why are you crying out to me? It's already done. It's already done. Romans 4 and 17. And so you got to get to this place where you stop sitting back and allow what God has placed in you to be restricted. God's trying to flow through you because he's trying to get somewhere and he can use you to accomplish it. He can use you to make it happen. I remember when we was little, we would have a water outside of our house and the water hose would run and how many of you had a water hose that one of the ends was cut off? You couldn't screw nothing on the other end. Because as that water hose caught a leak in it, you would cut it right there with a leak in so you could keep that water hose. We was too cheap or too stingy to go get another water hose. So then when you was running the water hose, at the time that you need to stop the water from running, you would fold it to, to hold the water so no more could come out. Well, that's what some of y'all are doing right now. Y'all are squeezing God so he can't flow through you. God said, release the tension so I can flow through you. We're restricting God in this place this morning. And God said, let me go. If you allow me to let go and let me in your life, I can do more. Romans 4 and 17. Romans 4 and 17. Read, sir. As it is written. It's what now? As it is written. Just say what Pastor Calvin is saying. Read, sir. I have made thee a father of many nations. So he's telling us what he has called you and what he is going to do for you in your life. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. Touch your neighbor and say, do you know who you are? They don't believe you. They don't believe you. Do you know who you are? I just want that to rest for me. Do you know who you are? I've called you and made you a father of many nations. I called you not to own one house, but I called you to own many houses. Do you know who you are? I called you to open your mouth and to call those things to be not as though they were. Do you know who you are? I've called you for more, but you're still sitting here and you're leaving me for the small things and I'm trying to give you some big things. Do you know who you are? So that's wrong with the majority of the church world. They don't know who they are. With all of this wonderful teaching that we have in this house, you still don't know who you are. The songs that are sung every week, this altar should be full of people that are up here and giving God praise and rejoicing Him because he's already done it. Lord, I'm not the way that I used to be. I'm giving you praise for that. I'm not the way that I used to act. I'm giving you praise for that. I don't say the things that I used to say. I'm giving you praise for that. I'm not living up under the bridge like I used to live. I'm giving you praise for that. I'm 
not with that whiskey bottle in my mouth, I'm giving you praise for that. I don't have a cigarette in my mouth anymore, I'm giving you praise for that. I don't lie no more, I'm giving you praise. Somebody got something to give God praise for. You got something to give God praise for. Why are we sitting here acting like God ain't done nothing for you? Why are you sitting here acting like you too good for two men too good? Somebody got something to give God praise for. You got a testimony. You got to give God something in this place. God has told 
told you that everything that you want, you can call those things to be not as though they were. So whatever you need, God says, speak it and it shall come to pass. But the enemy is always going to be there. The tempter, read, sir. And when the, and when the tempter came to him, read, sir. He said, thou be the son of God. He said, what now? If thou be the son of God. If you said that you are so-called saved, then why are you still sitting in the same place? Why you don't have this? But wait a minute, my God told me that I can have whatever I want. Read, sir, if thou be the son of God. He's trying to tell you who you are not. Read, sir, command that these stones be made He said, what now? Command that these stones be made So if the enemy know that if you can command something to happen, he's going to try to tell you that it cannot happen. Look at the word command. He said that if you be, the Son of God, command ye these stones to be made to bread. If you be the child of God, if that's your DNA, if, that's a big word, if, that's a big word, you know who you are. And if you know who you are, then you have the authority, or let me switch the word, you have the dominion to command what you want to happen. He was telling him that if you be the Son of God, command ye these stones to be made to bread. The problem is the enemy knows who you are, but you are still denying who God called you to be. And the reason why I say denying is because you have not walked into the purpose of what God told you who you are from the time that he laid his hands on you, changed your life, cleaned you up, and started you on a new way. You still have the same man mindset and mentality of the way I used to be. So how can you, a spiritual mind, command something to come to pass when you still are holding back on what God told you who you are? It would never happen. That's why he said, that's why I said that, man, that thing is so deep to me. A spiritual mind commands. A spiritual mind commands. I'm going to say it again. A spiritual mind commands. I don't know about, I, I didn't call for no phone. So I commanded to stop. But a spiritual Mind commands. First Chronicles 16 and 33. Start at the 32nd verse. First Chronicles 16 and 32. Read, sir. Let the seas roll. Uh huh. And the fullness thereof. Read, sir. Let the field reach up. Read, sir. And all that is therein. Is what now? And all that is therein. So no matter what state you in this morning, everybody should be rejoicing. I don't care what problem. He said, let the seas rage. That means that no matter what problems you have in your life, Come on. you still got to rejoice. Read, sir. Then shall the trees of the wood uh -huh. sing out Read, sir. at the presence of the Lord. So then if God said that I command the trees to even give me praise. Uh, give me praise. So when you see the trees raging and they're moving back and forth, God said they're giving me praise. He said, if you don't want to do it, I got something or somebody that will do it. If you can sit there and say, God, I don't, if you don't give it to me, I won't do this. But God said, you keep sitting there. I'm going to get some trees to even give me praise. Read, sir. Did you the trees of the wood? Read, sir. Sing out at the presence of the Lord. Who they singing out to? At the presence of the Lord. So as they moving back and forth, I can see them saying, holy, holy, holy. I can see them saying that, God, I'm giving you praise. I'm seeing them saying that, Lord, I worship you. God said, I even command the trees to give me praise. You sit there and you're thinking that. I'm too good. I, 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 I'm so too solidified. But God said, you keep sitting there. I got somebody that's going to worship me. I got somebody that's going to give me the honor that I deserve. See, you know, you forgot about what I did for you. You forgot about what you was crying out and said, Lord, if you just give me one more chance. You forgot about it. You said, Lord, if you could just give me, give me that back again. You can say, Lord, if you could bring my kids back. You forgot about all of that. in this place. I'm commanding some people that's going to rejoice. I'm commanding some people that's going to honor me. I'm commanding some people that's going to worship me. 
in. But you can keep sitting there. Something is that something else is gonna take your prey. Somebody else is gonna take your seat. Somebody else is gonna take your play.
Something is coming. Yes, sir. Now get ready. It's coming. Yes, sir. And as it comes, you got to be ready to give what is due. When Jesus was coming, he gave them a charge. He said that I want you to go and I want you to tell my people that have been bound. I want you to go and I want you to speak into their lives if you tell them that I got need of them. Stop sitting there doing the same thing week after week after week because I got some work for them to do. God is telling you this morning that things are going to be done that eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard of what is going to happen in your life. When your friends and your family see the new you, they're going to say, surely, surely God is in this place. Because I remember how they used to be. I remember the things that they used to do. But there was a word spoken. And God said, you got to lose my people. You got to let them go. Because I got some work for them to do. I got some work and they can't get this work done because they're holding iniquity in their heart. I said, tell them, this is the season, this is the time. Damn, my people are going to be loose. And I'm going to paraphrase and we're going to get out of here. When he told them to loose the coat, and if anybody asks you, just tell them I got need of it. If anybody asks you, why you worship God the way that you worship Him? You say, God got need of me. If anybody asks you, why you testify all the time about how God delivered you? You tell them, God got need of me. You tell them, say, I got a work to do. I can't sit here and do the same thing that I used to do. I can't get caught up into your messenger. I can't get caught up into talking about people. You're talking about the pastor and they're, they're baptizing the deacon. God got work for me to do. And so did it. As they were obedient to do what God told them. The people came. And they started crying out. And they started worshiping him. They opened their mouth and they just said, Hosanna! Hosanna! They started worshiping him. They opened their mouth. They started giving God something. And when they came down the road, they said the king is coming. Y'all gotta understand, somebody is coming. And when he comes, they gon' find me doing something. They gon' find me rejoicing. They gon' find me giving God praise. Y'all guessed it. Y'all guessed it. When the king was coming, they said he just can't come on any day. So when he come, they took off their garments. They took the palm leaf and they laid it down. They said, guess what? started crying out. He said, and if they don't worship me, if you don't worship him, God said, I'm going to allow the rocks to cry out. I'm going to allow the rocks to cry out. And somebody, something is going to give me praise. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. When you started giving God praise, when they started worshiping him, Yeah, what? 
worshiping God. You know what? The man that had the blind eye, and Jesus laid his hands on him, and his eyes was open. He was there. Giving God the worship. Giving God the praise. Yeah. 